Today on Studio One, revitalizing America's skies, the government is considering allowing pilots to choose their flight route instead of air traffic controllers. We'll let you know how it could affect you. Plus, Roger Brockmeyer is making a difference with his comforting smile and compassionate ear. And we'll preview the movie Mrs. Winterborn. Now, from the University of North Dakota with Scott Seiler and Stephanie Mars, this is Studio One. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Studio One today. Big fight this weekend here in Grand Forks. Virgil Hill will be fighting, and there are also a lot of other people on the card. Yes, North Dakota. He's a North Dakota native, and the whole state, and also people in Minnesota are definitely pulling for him. Yes, it. HBO. It'll be televised on HBO. Yeah. Oh, and we'll hear from Virgil in just a few minutes during our sports, but also later on Studio One. Ann Lochner will tell us about Kids Count. It's an important look at the future of North Dakota's children. And PGA golf pro Terry Benson will tell us what to look for in a set of clubs. But first, today is national news from CNN, where we'll hear from Timothy McVeigh, and also news from around the region with Mike Mundahl. Mike? Thanks, Scott and Stephanie. As the one-year anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing falls upon us, a new image is being painted for one of the suspects in the case. Stephen Jones, the attorney for suspect Timothy McVeigh, allowed camera crews from two television networks to photograph McVeigh in prison. Jones has been trying to soften the public image of McVeigh to show him smiling, cooperative, and working on his defense. It is a much different image than when Timothy McVeigh was first seen being led handcuffed and stern-faced out of the Perry, Oklahoma courthouse. After being held at a prison in El Reno, Oklahoma, McVeigh and co-defendant Terry Nichols were transferred to the Federal Correction Facility in Inglewood, Colorado, just outside Denver. So it's, the situation here is a lot better than it was in El Reno. Day and night. Good, good. Generally and overall, you're satisfied, you're upbeat. Yeah, yeah, things are looking better. Authorities plan to increase security at federal buildings for the anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing. Added measures range from photo identification checks to increased patrols. In Oklahoma City, people are already visiting the bombing site, leaving flowers and other items in memory of the 168 people killed. If you live in a $150,000 house and drive an expensive car, you could be audited by the Internal Revenue Service. The IRS is looking at taxpayers' lifestyles to see if they are spending more money than is reported on their tax return. The audit system called Economic Reality has auditors looking at all financial resources like inheritance money and non-taxable income. They are looking to see if a person's spending habits are consistent with their income. An H&R Block district manager says if spending exceeds income, the IRS may assume unreported income is being spent. The district manager also says if you are called in for a lifestyle audit, you should contact a tax attorney. However, lifestyle audits are selected by chance and less than 1% of taxpayers will be called in for such an audit. Balloons can brighten up a birthday party, but keep them out of children's reach. A study by a doctor at the University of Minnesota says balloons are the top cause of non-food choking deaths in children. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says most deaths involve swallowing, ingesting, inhaling, and suffocating on broken pieces of a balloon. The commission also has reports of two deaths caused by choking on examination gloves. The study concludes that doctors should keep latex gloves away from children and parents should be careful with toys like balloons that have no age standards. Most college students depend on scholarships, grants, or loans to get them through school, but there is an alternative for the adventurous. The Army Re Reserve Officers Training Corps, or ROTC, is an opportunity for students to develop confidence, motivation, and leadership skills. ROTC is offered at hundreds of colleges and universities throughout the country including the University of North Dakota. Most students involved in the program have wanted to join the military for some time. I think the military, especially the Army, has been something I've always had in the back of my mind when I was a kid growing up and wanted to get involved with. And I did want to go to college, and th so with the ROTC program enabled me to go to college and get an education and degree and go into the Army afterwards as a, a second lieutenant. The students take a range of military science classes along with participating in hands-on drills that will improve their skills. An air assault mission is one of the drills. This is a practice run for the juniors who will be graded on the same mission at advance camp this summer. What we have going here today is an operation is called an air assault operation. 
the cadets who are participating in this exercise have planned the exercise themselves. They've worked out all the details. All that we have really provided here from the ROTC department is the assets, the, the aircraft, which are being provided by the Air Force from Grand Forks Air Force Base. It's a very good opportunity for cadets to get out and uh, get some additional training like this. But the big thing that we're looking for here today is their planning of this operation. The normal commitment for an ROTC student who goes on to be commissioned is eight years. No matter where ROTC students go after college, they will be prepared for many different situations. Claire White Nova, Studio One News. All of the UND cadets will be commissioned into the Army after college. More than half of these students will go into a full-time job on active duty. The remaining students will go into reserve duty and seek civilian employment. And that's a look at news for this half hour. Scott and Stephanie. Thanks, Mike. Definitely very busy students. Very busy students, and I think students will get a little bit busier with the spring temperatures. They can finally pack away all their winter clothes, winter jackets, with the warm temperatures we've been having. Patrick, are these temperatures going to continue through the weekend? No, actually, no. We, are, uh, we hit a pretty good high yesterday, right around the mid-60s, and we're going to be cooling down into the mid and upper 40s for a high temperature for today, and that's going to stay fairly consistent over the weekend. Starting next week, though, things are going to change. Temperatures are going to start to go up, so you have to wait till then. First off, here's the current conditions here in Grand Forks this morning. We're under mostly cloudy skies. Our temperature of 39, dew points at 35 this hour. Relative humidity at 85%. Winds are northwest at 16, and our pressure is at 29.52 inches, holding steady. Current temperatures across the area, not too bad. Anywhere between 35 and uh, actually 50. Uh, Rapid City coming in at 48, 32 at Aberdeen, 30 at Fargo, 40 at Bismarck. Warmer down at Des Moines, 51 degrees this morning. And as you push up towards North International Falls, 39. Actually, they're seeing some light rain, some light snow out near the Minot Air Force Base. And this little area of precipitation, some snow to the west and uh, farther to the south. It's more or less drizzle. This is all light rain shower activity. This is the, uh, thunder, this is the storm system that brought some heavier uh, thunderstorm activity across southern Wisconsin, most of northern Illinois, and eastern Iowa. By tonight, we're going to see the next storm system move out over the Rockies into the central plains, and this system is going to be starting to engulf more of that Gulf moisture, push up over the Great Lakes rather rapidly, and then we'll see another system developing across the southern plains. We'll have a slight chance for some light slow movement in here by sun Saturday. Now, here's a look at the Friday's highs. We're looking at 40s across northeast North Dakota. Look for 50s, possibly some mid-50s across the southwest. 30s for lows for much of North Dakota, 20s to the north. Your forecast today, look for mostly cloudy skies. Again, we'll have a chance for some drizzle activity here in Grand Forks. Look for winds to be out of the northwest around 10 to 20 with a high of around 47. For tonight, again, mostly cloudy skies with a chance of some light, snow, light drizzle, possibly some light snow with north and northwest winds 5 to 15 with a low of around 30. And for the Grand Forks outlook Saturday through Monday, where it looks like we're going to continue to stay with below normal temperatures, 45 to 51 for the high temperatures. And again, we'll have a slight chance for some light snow moving in on Saturday. So conditions aren't going to be favorable for a lot of things. But for the most part, though, Red River is starting to, uh, it's actually going to be starting to crest by the end of the weekend. Right now, it's about 43 and a quarter feet high. Back to you, Scott and Steph. Thanks, Patrick. I think a lot of people will be relieved once it crests. Mm -hmm. And never underestimate the power of flood, of flood waters, that's for sure. Yes. Josh Morton joins us now for our first look at today's sports. And Josh, it's NHL playoffs. We're coming down the home stretch, Scott. The National Hockey League is holding their annual spring party. It's called the Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup playoffs, and some teams just happy to get an invite, while others looking to drink it from the cup. The New York Rangers, one of those teams feeling thirsty, hosting the Montreal Canadiens Thursday. Montreal has a 1-0 lead in the series, and it's the Canadiens looking like the favorite as Lyle Odeline puts them up 3-0 in the second on the breakaway goal. The Rangers do come back to tie it up, though, 3-3 in the third. And we're still in the third when Mark Recchi finds Vincent Damfus for the game winner, and the Canadiens take a 2-0 lead in the series. We head to Toronto and Mike Keenan's Blues took the first game of their series with the Leafs. Game two in overtime, tied up 4-4, and Matt Sundin going to net the game winner for the Leafs. They tie it up the series 1-1. One to, one. to baseball and Lupinella Seattle Mariners needed no extra innings to take care of the Tigers. Second inning, bases juiced. Alex Rodriguez at the plate, facing Clint Sadowski, and that ball is gone. His first grand slam of his career puts the M's up 6-1, and they go on to an 11-3 win in the Kingdom. And that's a look at the national highlights. Now here's a look at the overnight scores.
What's that old joke? I went to a boxing match and a hockey game broke out. Well, UND's Ingolstadt Arena has been host to plenty of hockey fights, but now it's hosting the real thing. Hometown hero Virgil Hill defends his WBA light heavyweight title Saturday versus New York City's Louis Duvall. A press conference on Wednesday got things going. I think he's getting a little older and he's slipping a little, you know. Um, I'm young. I'm coming up. Um, I'm really hungry. I never trained so hard for a fight in my life. Virgil, though, not quite ready to give up the belt. I anticipate a great fight. I know that he's hungry. I know that uh, he would like for me to pass the torch. I'm not willing to pass it. My time is not done yet. Hill comes in with a record of 41-1, and one, and Duvall is 22-0. and 0. Stephanie, maybe after the, slow, after the show, Scott and I should do a little boxing. I think it might hurt Scott, though. Yeah, I'd knock him out <laughs> no, easily. I, I think you need a rela reality check there, Scott. <laughs> oh, ooh. 11 minutes now past the hour and still ahead on Studio One. We'll show you how Chaplain Roger Brockmeyer is giving residents spiritual guidance. But first, we'll talk with Ann Lochner about her new book called Kids Cone. Studio One continues after this. Log on to us on the Internet. Our email address is udstudio at badlands.nodak edu. We want to hear what you have to say about Studio One. Let us know what you think about our show, or better yet, give us your story and guest ideas of who you'd like to see on Studio One. Insurance. Unfortunately, it costs. Fortunately, it pays. Voller Insurance. Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, Bismarck. You know, ever since I got Community National's imaging, I've had a great idea for a game show. From your bank statements, who can find check number 1144? Here it is. Jack's Hardware Store, September 15th, 1995 for $39. Who is the only bank to offer this incredible imaging service? Uh, uh, my bank? Wrong. Bill? Community National Bank, of course. Be a winner in your new fashion wardrobe from Columbia Mall. Look great in class, your school activity, and your sporting event. New styles are arriving daily. It's an easy stop and comfortable shopping when you shop for all your new fashions at Columbia Mall Grand Forks. Easy parking, great people, super prices on your new fashions. It's the Army National Guard has been serving Americans ever since there has been an America. And we will always be here, giving our best to our communities, preserving our freedoms, protecting our way of life. We're America's citizen soldiers. We're mechanics, businessmen, farmers, nurses, teachers, neighbors. Proud to be part of the communities we serve. The Army National Guard, Americans at their best. And pick your insurance company as your agent and broker. That's our exact job. We think we do it well and have been since 1947. Voller Insurance, Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, Bismarck. You're watching Studio One. News, weather, sports, and entertainment. Everyone is concerned about the well-being of our children. There is one state program that is designed to collect data about the living conditions of North Dakota children. Ann Lochner from Kids Count is here to tell us what the latest statistics mean to North Dakota people. Ann, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me, Scott. Well, a brief explanation of what Kids Count actually is first. Okay, Kids Count is both a national effort to track the status of children in all the states of the United States as well as a state-by-state -state effort to track the status of children within individual states. And North Dakota Kids Count is one of those state programs. And both the national and the state program are sponsored by the Annie E. Casey Foundation. And their whole sort of focus in life is to champion the cause of children, particularly children who are vulnerable for any reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's take a look at, at what your, the cover of the book will look like. It's not out yet. It'll be out in a couple of days. But what type of information did you, did you get from it? 
Well, the North Dakota Kids Count book really looks at individual counties and regions within our state. So that when we, when one would open the book, supposing that we lived in any particular county, on two pages you would have information virtually about your children from birth through adolescence. And if you were a concerned citizen, parent, teacher, whomever, you could take that information and really get an idea about where your children were facing challenges that you felt needed to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some sort of examples of, of, of what came of the information that you get from the people throughout North Dakota? Well, I think perhaps the most um, notable result of putting, of gathering all this data and then putting it together in one book and then sort of looking over it, so to speak, from a, um, a broader perspective, is to note that while we think the children in North Dakota all pretty much are in the same situation, when you look at individual county areas, we find that they're not. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in one county that may be losing population, the, the child population may be shrinking as well as the resources to support the child population. Mm -hmm. So that means there might be very few extracurricular things available. The, the grocery stores may be disappearing. The churches may be um, consolidating. Schools may be consolidating. That's a very different experience for a child than living in a much larger county area such as Cass County or Grand Forks County where the numbers tend to be increasing. Mm -hmm. So I think the findings tell us that we need to look at individual areas more carefully to pinpoint <clears throat> excuse me how can we how we can provide the most help to the children in specific areas. Mm -hmm. uh, you did one last year. Exactly. Any results from that yet? Have anyone taken that data and applied it to helping the children? Yes, as a matter of fact they have and we're we're very pleased to see that in um, in probably several individual communities across North Dakota efforts have been um, initiated that address the problems that have been uh, sort of pictured or portrayed through looking more carefully at the data. I know one particular commu one particular community um, out in the western part of the state has focused on teen pregnancy has used a program called the Child Watch program in which they organized community leaders and took them on a bus trip mm -hmm. to actually visit sites that were related to that problem in a child's life and the result of that program has been a teen pregnancy new program that they've established within their community. Within our Grand Forks community the the same kind of approach was used. A child watch program was um, organized involving community members and they visited before and after school child care centers, mm -hmm. had breakfast with little kids at 6.30 in the morning, <laughs> talked to them about what happens when after school, and really made the Child Watch community participants more aware of what happens to children who have no before and after school program to go to. So those people have continued as a group as a Child Watch Coalition in Grand Forks and they're now looking at addressing their next issue. Mm -hmm. So for the communities who use the information I think it only benefits the the children in those communities. Yeah. Quick answer on this one. We, you say we must affirm our role as protectors of children and make their well-being our highest priority. Why? Because we really can't measure the loss of one child's future. We, we really don't know what it means for tomorrow that what we might have had that we won't have because we haven't supported that child to reach adulthood as a healthy person. Mm -hmm. So that's why. That's why. And thank you for joining us and we hope people take a look at this information and use it. So do I and thank you again. Sure thing. About 20 minutes now after the hour and just ahead on Studio One, 20th century writer Gertrude Stein still lives today through Chautauqua performer Lynn Miller. But first, lonely residents at Valley Memorial Homes have found a friend in Chaplain Roger Brockmeyer. His compassion for the elderly is evident in everything he does. A child needs you, you are the host. Come on and join us. I was 
looking for a car for three months, and the folks at Honda Nissan knew I did TV commercials. And so they asked me for suggestions, and all I could tell them was how great I was treated at Honda Nissan. And the next thing you know, here I am. When I went to Honda Nissan, I was treated with such respect, and I really couldn't believe the quality and selection that I found there. People always tell me that you get what you pay for, but at Honda Nissan, you really do get what you pay for. Beautiful memories, beautiful places, a quiet evening by the lake, a pond by moonlight, an old barn weathered by the years, a country lane leading to the past, an old-fashioned harvest complete with feathered freeloaders, a wild stagecoach ride into the past, a winter hunt. Home Economy Home Furnishings offers a wide variety of paintings which will beautify your home as well as fuel your imagination. Travel through our Home Furnishings department today. It will be one of the most inexpensive trips you've ever taken, even if you buy a painting. Home Economy Home Furnishings, Highway 81 North, Grand Forks. The School of Law at the University of North Dakota is steeped in tradition. From the first graduating class, students today learn from the modern law library and computer labs. Students write for the North Dakota Law Review, take part in moot court, and review court proceedings with video technology. Law and medical students compete in the annual malpractice bowl. The size of our student body gives great access to their teachers, and our computer network allows us to access worldwide legal resources. Look up the UND School of Law for more opportunities. When people enter a nursing home, unforeseen challenges arise for both the residents and their families. However, one person helps everyone adjust to these changes with his comforting smile and compassionate ear. This is why Chaplain Roger Brockmeyer is someone we want you to meet. During hard times, most people look to others and higher spiritual beings for guidance. At Valley Memorial Homes, residents turn to Chaplain Roger Brockmeyer. In this day and age, you know, people do live, along, do live long enough that many of them lose their children. Uh, their children die before they do. And I worked with a number of people with grief issues with that and loss of spouses, um, loss of home, moving here, uh, adjusting to this particular home. Roger is the gardener of faith for many residents. With his gentle care, he nurtures each person's spiritual resources until they bloom. That's the gospel reading for today. More spiritual outlook on how they look at life and how they say, you know, there must be some higher power out there. There must be someone out there who cares uh, and makes all this work uh, and that stirs in our lives and gives us a sense of, of meaning. Roger says he's amazed at the amount of lonely people who live in nursing homes. He does his best to take away this feeling by lending them a compassionate ear. The number of people that um, do the best they can and are alone and you come into their lives and they are so glad that they're, you take away that aloneness, you take away some of the loneliness that's involved in that, and people respond to that. A plaque on Roger's wall epitomizes his dedication to others. It reads, a great guy who cares about the value of people. Roger is making a difference by providing not only spiritual guidance, but also friendship to those at Valley Memorial Homes. Roger says the residents teach him how to live with and enjoy aging. Connie Doyle is alone, pregnant, and poor. She's on a train with the Winterborns, a young, happy couple who's also expecting a baby. The couple is on their way to meet the husband's wealthy family for the first time. When the train derails and the Winterborns are killed, Connie is mistaken for Patricia Winterborn. Patricia's mother-in-law, Grace Winterborn, falls immediately in love with Connie and insists she stay and become part of the family. <laughs> Maybe we could do a little something with the hair. No, that's... <laughs> Maybe, actually. And the, the clothes, they don't fit, number one, and I think it could be a better style. And, and the shoes, I did like these shoes. Also the makeup, I think. Maybe this was a bit much. And the nails, I didn't like the nails. I didn't like this. Excuse me. Forgive me, I never had a daughter. All right. I barely had a mother. After a few days at the Winterborns' mansion, Connie thinks she could be, make a life out of being Patricia, especially after falling for Bill, the twin of Patricia's husband. Now, time to take a look at the events that are happening in your area.
from athletes like Michael Jordan to political figures like President Clinton and even your next door neighbor, outstanding in individuals are often admired. These people can inspire us to try out for a team or take on a difficult task. Here are your thoughts on who you admire the most. I admire my dad the most because of his really positive attitude he had on life and just the way he presented himself to those around him and his integrity. I admire James Kisgen most because he wrestles for UND. Well, I admire my mother because she has a lot of wisdom and she gave me a lot to, to live for. Mother Teresa because she's given of herself so much over the years. Probably my mother. Uh, because she's given me the sense of humor that I have and I think that's really important in life because it helps to cope with situations that most people couldn't if they didn't have. I admire my mom very much because uh, she's been a very, very supportive parent. She's a wonderful parent, I feel. Um, she's just always very there for me. Gertrude Stein has been called one of the most innovative writers and thinkers of the 20th century, yet few people know what she accomplished. One example of Stein's contributions came on Saturday evenings when she would display art by famous painters such as Picasso in her salon before such pieces were available to the public. Today, one woman's work is educating people about Stein. Lynn Miller is a writer and performance professor who's telling people about Gertrude Stein. Miller is doing this through a series of plays and performances. She centers the performance on Stein and the accomplishments she made during her life as a writer and thinker. Miller's idea is to show people what Stein would be like in today's society. She actually did make a very triumphant tour of America in 1934 and 35, and that's how I set my performance, as if it's 1934 or 35, and I am giving one of Gertrude Stein's lectures in America. But in reality, I don't give a lecture she would have given. I give a lecture uh, that I think, were she able to come back in 1996, she would give. Miller performs for audiences across the United States, including such places as Chicago, Denver, and most recently, Grand Forks. 28 minutes after and still ahead on Studio One, Terry Benson has some tips on golfing, whether you're a seasoned pro or a novice. Plus, a look at the Federal Aviation Administration's new plan called Free Flight. It will make getting to your destination quicker. That story plus Patrick's updated weather forecast and news and sports in our next half hour on Studio One. UND's Division of Continuing Education can help you learn throughout your lifetime. Begin or continue your education through correspondence study and learning after hours with classes on weekends and evenings. Or enhance your personal and professional development through conferences, management seminars, and specialized programs. Our goal is to provide quality programs and extend UND resources to you. For more information, call 777-4266 or 1-800-342-8230. At Studio One, we're moving you into the future, and we're growing. Today, nearly one and a half million people have the opportunity to see Studio One. In addition to Channel 3 in Grand Forks, Studio One can be seen on Channel 2 in Fargo, Channel 12 in Bismarck, Mandan, Channel 19 in Minot, in Crookston, Minnesota on Channel 7, and now on Channel 6 in the Twin Cities greater metro area. You're never far away from Studio One as we move you into the future. Oh, gee, I mean, you can ask the students. The education that you get is as good as or better than what you can get at anywhere else. The teachers really go out of their way to help you outside of class. It's just an incredibly rich opportunity and environment here. Gee, Vince, what kind of dummy wouldn't know how to use a child safety seat? Beats me, lads. Child's play. You just buckle him in. Unless he's over 20 pounds. Then this one's good. Except if he's over 40 pounds. Then you're into this kind of room. What if he outgrows that? Put him in a booster seat. What if he's too big for a booster seat? Would he use the safety belt? The Auto Safety Hotline can tell you everything you need to know about keeping your child safe in a car. I'm a wreck. Totaled. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Call 1-800-424-9393. Now, from the University of North Dakota, this is Studio One. Welcome back, everyone. 
today in remembrance of the Oklahoma City bombing and all those who died. There'll be a moment of silence at 9.02 Oklahoma time that will be celebrated throughout the nation. Today. Lots of people will definitely be thinking about that. Coming up also in the next 30 minutes on Studio One, we'll show you how citizens are already combating mosquitoes so they can enjoy the summer. Plus an in-depth look into a new plan that allows planes to fly directly to their destination. And the golf season is just around the corner, and Terry Benson will show us what to look for in golf gear. You'll practice your swing? Yes, I'm going to figure out what type of clubs I need. But first, today's national news from CNN and news from the region with Mike Mondahl. Mike? Thanks, Scott and Stephanie. Theodore Kaczynski's lawyer is moving to drop the bomb possession charge against his client. A hearing on the mo motion is scheduled for Friday. Kaczynski is the man suspected to be the Unabomber. The defense says there has been so much publicity, Kaczynski won't get a fair trial. His lawyer hopes to convince a federal judge that government leaks have depicted such a twisted picture of Kaczynski. There was something uh, uh, disturbed, some problem uh, within um, uh, Ted Kaczynski, uh, a quiet arrogance, uh, uh, you might say a, a monstrous ego. I mean, he had clearly fallen down. Kaczynski may also suffer from depression. The suspected Unabomber's reign of terror lasted nearly 18 years. University of Nebraska backup quarterback Brooke Beringer and a friend were killed in a small plane crash Thursday. Beringer was flying a 1941 Piper Cub when it slammed into an alfalfa field near Lincoln, Nebraska. Beringer helped Nebraska win the 1994 national title. He was expected to be drafted into the NFL this weekend. The common partner of Pepper could now be something doctors recommend. A salt alternative called Cardia is on the shelves in Florida and Pennsylvania. However, Cardia is different than salt substitutes found in grocery stores. Only pharmacies are allowed to sell a salt alternative for use under medical supervision. Cardia contains less than half the sodium of salt and includes magnesium and potassium, which reduce blood pressure and improve taste. Cardia is said to look and taste more like salt than any other substitutes but should not be used just to cut down on sodium. Yeah. Tests found that people with hypertension reduce their blood pressure with Cardia more than people using salt. Cardia sells close to $5 a box and should hit pharmacy shelves soon nationwide. The FBI is moving up. The average age of FBI agents has gone up a few years. It is now 29 years old. The reason for the increase is that agents are expected to have more work experience. According to the FBI Field Division in Minneapolis, there were 47,000 applicants nationwide last year. Of those, only 2% were hired. In the three states of North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota, there are 100 FBI agents. Playing with dolls is not just for kids anymore. Doll making is an age-old craft, and one couple is taking advantage of this not-so-new idea. It's been about five years since this doll-making duo started their doll shop. Ken and Janet Cool own a shop called Keepsake Dolls and Supplies. They say this beauty is what started the spark. We had a friend who made dolls, and so for uh, our anniversary and Janet's birthday, I had him make a doll. Eventually, they became involved and later took over the business. Besides making porcelain dolls, Ken and Janet teach people the doll-making craft. Both are certified instructors through the Bell Company, which distributes dolls. Every Tuesday and Thursday, classes are held at their workshop. We like to let our students do their own work, okay. because then it's a their doll. If they need assistance or need help on a particular portion, we'll show them how to do it. To make a doll, it generally takes about four sessions. Each session varies from two to four hours, and most students enjoy their time at the workshop. I like the old dolls. But I'm, there was no way I could afford to pay that price, so I decided it would probably be wise to make my own. The Cools also repair dolls and sell supplies. The couple enjoys teaching, but what's more exciting is seeing students' creativity. The uh, different dolls that we have reflect different personalities of that person. Uh, it, it's difficult to say until you start watching or, or looking at the things that the, the people do make. Manipan Lam Kampui, Studio One. Ken Cool says he's not embarrassed about, making, about working with dolls. Historically, many famous doll makers were men. There's one sign of spring that many people are trying to forget. Mosquitoes. 
Mosquitoes breed in standing water or in muddy areas. And with the recent flooding in surrounding areas, cities are looking for your help in combating this yearly nuisance. The methods that they could help control the mosquitoes by would be to empty out the tin cans, uh, flush their bird baths weekly, uh, drain a abandoned swimming pool, rain gutters on houses uh, should be checked and cleaned if needed. Ground spraying can begin as early as May 15th in Grand Forks to try and eliminate some of the mosquito larvae before they hatch. Hopefully this will control the pests and keep the bite out of summer. And that's a look at news for this half hour. Scott and Stephanie. Thanks, Mike. Those pesky things are going to be biting us no matter what. <laughs> yes, but I think with the winter we've had, those warm temperatures will. I'll be welcoming mosquitoes because no. at least you know it's warm temperatures. Patrick, are April showers going to bring May flowers this year? Well, that's what it looks like. Uh, just here in the short term, though, we're going to continue to stay with those below normal temperatures. And it looks like we're going to see a few more clouds sticking around, possibly, possibly a slight chance of some light snow coming in by tomorrow. We'll get to that in a second. First off, your current conditions here in Grand Forks this morning under mostly cloudy skies are a temperature of 39, looking at a dew point of 35, relative humidity 85% with a northwest wind at 16 miles per hour and a pressure at 29.52 inches, holding steady. Your forecast today, look for mostly cloudy skies to continue. We're going to have a chance for some drizzle coming in here. We already did see some overnight. Look for northwest winds between 10 and 20 miles per hour and a high of around 47. For tonight, look for continued mostly cloudy skies. Again, another chance for some light drizzle. Possibly that drizzle turned into some light snow. There was some light snow reported up at the Minot Air Force Base earlier on this morning. Look for north northwest winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour and a low of around 30. And in the Grand Forks Outlook, Saturday through Monday, temperatures are going to go back on the increase throughout the weekend. Again, we have a slight chance of some light snow coming in on Saturday. But again, Monday, we're going to see a high temperature making it right back up to about 51 degrees so we can actually start to get things dried out here in the Red River Valley. Scott and Stephanie? Thanks, Patrick. It's nice to see those warm temperatures. Oh, exactly. You know, with those warm temperatures, you know, thawing, we'll have floods and also spring sports. Josh? Well, it's a fall sport that's practiced in the spring, and we've seen the signs of spring this past week. The birds chirping, the rivers flooding, and the sun shining, but we should add one more nice part about spring at UND, the sound of pads popping and pigskins flying. It's a far cry from the packed stadiums of September, but it's a necessity for college football programs. It's called spring practice, and it means lots of drills and no opponent, which gives the young players a chance to show their skills. I've heard from the older guys that the spring ball is where you'll know where you stand after, after spring, and then in the fall, there won't be many changes, so you gotta, do, you gotta show what you can do now. Atkinson is one of many Sioux freshmen who redshirted their first fall, and this is their first chance to impress the coaches. But for some veterans, all practice and no play isn't always much fun. Everybody dreads it your senior, coming to your senior year, your last spring ball. It's not so much for me learning the defense, it's more just technique work for me. I mean, I know the defense, I've been running for four years, so it's more like I just have to learn new techniques and get better at like my pass rush or maybe a little strong on my run block and just stuff like that. And I think some for some guys, it kind of depends on where you're at. I think if you're an established player, there's some grind to spring ball because you've been through it a few times and it's the same plays, the same techniques. Same plays or not though, some veterans still just want to play. Uh, it's not bad, you know, watch young guys learn the system. You know, we just kind of, we get a few reps here and there and you know, just stay fresh on our assignments. It's good to strap up again. You know, you get that itch to play every spring, and it's, it's good to suit up again. And the next time these guys strap it up with an opponent will be in September when the Sioux go for their fourth straight North Central Conference title. The NCAA rules allow for 15 practices during spring drills, and the Sioux will wrap things up April 27th with an inter-squad game at Memorial Stadium. Here's another look at the scores from last night. And speaking of football, the NFL Draft kicks off this weekend in Madison Square Garden in New York City. Scott and Stephanie, the New York Jets, hold the first pick. My selection, I'm thinking they're going to take Keyshawn Johnson of USC. 
We'll ask him next week, see how it turns yeah, out. Yeah, see if he's right. <laughs> 41 after the hour. And if you're thinking of upgrading your golf equipment, Terry Benson will give you a few tips. Plus a look at a new plan that could mean future savings for airlines and travelers. That story's next on Studio One. Insurance. Unfortunately, it costs. Fortunately, it pays. Voller Insurance. Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, Bismarck. The University Bookstore at UND is open to everyone and invites you to make it your lifelong learning resource center. At the largest university bookstore in the Dakotas, you can choose from a wide selection of educational materials, imprinted clothing, and gift items. The trade department carries general interest books, reference materials, and educational software. Special orders and direct mailing services are available at the University Bookstore by calling 1-800-671-0948. Be a winner in your new fashion wardrobe from Columbia Mall. Look great in class, your school activity, and your sporting event. New styles are arriving daily. It's an easy stop and comfortable shopping when you shop for all your new fashions at Columbia Mall Grand Forks. Easy parking, great people, super prices on your new fashions. It's the If you think a college education is out of reach, the Army National Guard can put it within your grasp. With the Montgomery GI Bill, you can attend college full-time while serving in the Army National Guard. It's the best way to earn money for college while serving your country and your community. So join the Army National Guard, earn the money you need for college, and learn the skills you need for life. The Army National Guard, Americans at their best. And pick your insurance company as your agent and broker. That's our exact job. We think we do it well and have been since 1947. Voller Insurance, Grand Forks, Devil's Lake, Bismarck. You're watching Studio One. News, weather, sports, and entertainment. When the Wright brothers flew the first airplane, they were then the only airplane in the sky. Today, thousands of passengers and planes compete for space in a crowded and heavily controlled air traffic environment. Studio One's Eric Detheridge takes an in-depth look at free flight, a new concept designed to reshape air travel into the next century. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. It makes sense, but when you step on board an airplane, it's hardly that simple. If we want to fly from New York to Los Angeles, a plane is required to fly on airways, highways in the skies, so to speak. After traveling the predetermined route of zigs and zags, the plane finally reaches L.A. But along the way, valuable time and money is wasted by flying an indirect path. Airline industry experts point to America's aging air traffic control system as one reason for years of lost profits. Its saving grace may be free flight, a concept under development by the Federal Aviation Administration and the airlines. It would allow pilots to choose their route of flight without reporting to an air traffic controller. Michael Biata, a United Airlines captain and one of free flight's chief proponents, made his case to aviation students at the University of North Dakota. Uh, I look at free flight as defining who gets to choose the path. Uh, I want to fly from A to B in the path that I choose, and in fact, if I choose to change that, be able to change it, and still have ground-based separation services provided for me. Beata says the savings for airlines and time and fuel will be in the billions of dollars, but the biggest gain is overall efficiency. The real benefit is the operational flexibility that allows me as an operator to take my hub and consistently mesh it. So from a logistical standpoint, it's like a production process. Every airplane's where it needs to be, when it needs to be, regardless of uh, tactical real-time events. If free flight takes away some of the power of air traffic control, will it spell pink slips for controllers? And will it compromise safety? No on both counts, says Gary Bartelson, director of the air traffic control department at UND Aerospace. He says free flight is not only safe, but chances of a mid-air collision are almost impossible. UND is one of the leaders in testing free flight. 
Bartleson boots up the air traffic control simulator with a hypothetical free flight environment. In this program, pilots select their own course, speed, and altitude. Controllers act as traffic managers and can referee a potential conflict only if protective zones around one airplane invades another's. In all of Bartleson's free flight simulations, including today's, this has never happened. I have never been a proponent of anything that something like this, but after looking at it and myself firsthand, yeah, I'm sold on the, on the idea. I can put airplanes through here. I can send an airplane from Winnipeg to Texas right through this, this big jumble right through here, guaranteeing they won't hit. Bartleson says technology like reliable software and global positioning satellites are available, but convincing the air traffic control industry to evolve may be half the battle. Uh, you still have to have an eye in the sky. Someone's got to be looking at this, and someone has to be able to step in and say, we have a conflict, not run it. The wave of the future is going to be computerized air traffic control. There's no doubt about it. You have to. I mean, who separates uh, uh, ships in the shipping lanes in the, United, in the world? Nobody but a computer. If all goes according to plan, free flight should be fully integrated by the year 2010. Most experts agree free flight will save money and get you to where you want to go faster and with added safety. Freedom has its rewards. Eric Dethroyd joins us for more information. Eric, you know, with you were saying potentially billions of dollars in savings for the airlines, will they pass that along to the consumers? In an indirect way, yes, Scott. Uh, the thing is that uh, ticket prices right now are just, uh, they're very high because the uh, because of mergers over the years of the airlines. But once uh, free flight gets in place, uh, airlines will be healthy. So a profitable airline means better ticket prices. What kind of political support does free flight have? Well, right now, Congress appropriates funds for the FAA, so mm -hmm. the airlines and the FAA have to get behind uh, each other on their plans and propose that to Congress. So the agreeability on the proposals is going to be the dif difficult part. We'll wait and see how that turns out. Thanks, Eric. 48 minutes after the hour, and up next on Studio One, Stephanie talks with PGA Golf Pro Terry Benson about golf basics. If there's something you want to know about Studio One, write us, call us, or fax us. Our address is Box 7307, Grand Forks, North Dakota, 58202. If you wish to call us, dial 701-777-4346 or fax your message to us at 701-777-4342. Drown your campfires with water. Make sure it's totally wet. Then stir and drown again. We know we can count on you to do what Smokey says. Only you can prevent forest fires. I was looking for a car for three months, and the folks at Honda Nissan knew I did TV commercials. And so they asked me for suggestions, and all I could tell them was how great I was treated at Honda Nissan. And the next thing you know, here I am. When I went to Honda Nissan, I was treated with such respect. And I really couldn't believe the quality and selection that I found there. People always tell me that you get what you pay for. But at Honda Nissan, you really do get what you pay for. When you put together quality faculty with quality programs, with superb students and all kinds of neat opportunities, you're going to get literally a world-class education. And that's what we can provide at the University of North Dakota. Coming here, you do meet a lot of people from different cultures, and it's really broadened my horizons a lot, kept me more open-minded. I really like the professors here. They're always available. You can go in and talk to them whenever you need them. It really has everything to offer. You don't need to go far away to get a really good education anymore.
golfers are itching to get on the golf course as the grass gets greener. You may be a beginner or a seasoned player, but if you don't have the right equipment, you may not make par. PGA Golf Pro Terry Benson is here today to show us what to look for in a set of golf clubs. Thanks for joining us today, Terry. What are the first things that a beginner like myself should look for in a set of clubs? Well, first of all, the modern iron of today is the cavity back perimeter weighted golf club, meaning that the weight is in the heel, toe, and sole of the golf club. Um, and should you measure to make sure that the height works for you? They're not too long. They should yes. be at a, a shoulder. Yes. Uh, all diff all pros have a different fitting system that they can measure each individual for and you need to go to your pro and find out and then they'll measure you by you can hit golf balls and stuff and find out which clubs are good for you now with the woods they're going they're going with the metal woods and the perimeter weighted with a slightly offset hosel what the offset hosel does is allows your hands to stay ahead of the golf ball through impact and that allows a little lower ball trajectory and at the same time reduces the chances of slice and most beginner golfers have a tendency to slice the ball. Now, now the irons and the woods both come in stainless steel and graphite shafts. What is the difference between those two shafts? The graphite shaft uh, tends to be a little softer feel and at the same time you can create more club head speed. When I go into the to pick out a pair, a set of golf clubs, do I have to get all the irons and everything or are there certain ones that I can start out with and then add mm -hmm. to my um, set as I go? Yeah. Now, depending on the player, uh, most beginners would start out with uh, three through pitching wedge and then as their game develops to add on accordingly. But for a lot of women uh, who can't hit longer irons, uh, we got th they got the nine wood and seven wood to take place of the three, four, and five iron. And juniors, they can start out pretty much with uh, three, five, or excuse me, five, seven, nine iron, and then a driver and a three wood. So, what are the basic differences between the different irons, between the three and the five iron? Different lofts. Okay. They all have different lofts, and like a three iron fly has less loft than a five iron, so it'll fly longer and lower than a five iron would. Well, we have our set of golf clubs. What would be the next step for me as a beginner? The the next step that you need to do, which I strongly advise, is get a lesson. Go to a professional in the area and get lessons, opposed to going out with, with uh, your friends and goofing around like that because then you're going to learn bad habits and bad habits are very hard to break and those bad habits are going to stay with you an <laughs> awful long time. What types of things would I learn at lessons? Uh, the grip, the basic grip, stance, uh, posture. Um, basic things, swing, swing plane, uh, how to hit the ball. Um, basically what a professional will give you is a general understanding of the golf swing so you can understand what happens when you slice the ball, what happens when you hook the ball, and things like that. Well, could you give me an example of the proper stance and the proper grip sure. of a club? You bet. And I can move this. First of all, the grip, you need to grab a hold with the left hand. This is the standard grip that I'm teaching here. Okay, and then you take the right hand and you put it over you, whether you use the overlap grip or the interlock grip. Uh, both hands should be facing towards your target. The back of your left hand faces towards your target and the front of your right hand, and that's a standard grip, okay? And then feet should be shoulder width, and then you should always bend your knees and just throw them away. And you should always be your shoulders and your feet and your hips lined up with your target parallel. In uh, putting, I know you don't have a putter with you today, but what proper stance should you have with putting? Is that with similar? Putting, yeah, now with putting you should have, uh, your feet should be shoulder width and your head should be like over the golf ball. You should be able to like drop a ball and then that other ball would hit. Like if there was a ball here, this ball could come down and hit your ball. And that's where you should stand from the ball. Well, thank you for joining us today, Terry. We really appreciate the tips you've given us. Okay, thank you. 55 minutes now after the hour. Studio One continues after this.
from the University of North Dakota, you're watching Studio One. UND's Division of Continuing Education can help you learn throughout your lifetime. Begin or continue your education through correspondence study and learning after hours with classes on weekends and evenings. Or enhance your personal and professional development through conferences, management seminars, and specialized programs. Our goal is to provide quality programs and extend UND resources to you. For more information, call 777-4266 or 1-800-342-8230. Good afternoon, officer. My license and registration. Cheeseburger? It's hot out today, huh, officer? Maybe my tail lights out. Shouldn't or... you be carpooling? I guess you're right. I guess I am. Carpooling can save up to 600,000 gallons of gas a year. This message sponsored by Ad Council and EarthShare. The School of Law at the University of North Dakota is steeped in tradition. From the first graduating class, students today learn from the modern law library and computer labs. Students write for the North Dakota Law Review, take part in moot court, and review court proceedings with video technology. Law and medical students compete in the annual malpractice bowl. The size of our student body gives great access to their teachers and our computer network allows us to access worldwide legal resources. Look up the UND School of Law for more opportunities. And now a follow-up on a story brought to you a few months ago on Studio One. Josie Nelson was a guest on Studio One and told us how she was trying to qualify for the women's wheelchair basketball event in the 1996 International Paralympics. Since then, she received the good news. She qualified and this August will represent the United States in Atlanta immediately following the Olympics. This summer, she will have a two-week training sessions in Colorado Springs and Omaha. And one more point about Josie. Since appearing on Studio One, she got married and is now Josie Nelson Johnson. Our congratulations to Josie. Next week on Studio One, Josh Morton will bring you an in-depth story about parents who push their children too far in sports and what effect this has on them years later. That and more next week on Studio One. And that wraps up uh, Studio One today. We appreciate you joining us. And we're going to leave you with some sure signs of spring, all courtesy of Studio One's Paul Matheson. From all of us here, have a great week. We'll see you in one week.